Roberto Blake, you made it to Los Angeles, Orange County, for the annual YouTube convention called... VidCon. This is VidCon 2017, everybody. Eight years strong. Eight years strong. Now, you're on the industry track here. What's the difference between the industry track and the creator track? It's wildly more expensive. <laughs> but that and you get access to like really great sessions that have a lot more to do with YouTube analytics, YouTube data. The creator track is more about hearing uh, things from your favorite creators and their story, their journey. It's maybe some things about their niche or the business. or But like you want real depth. You want to know how to grow a full-time income here on YouTube. You want to build a successful brand. Or maybe you work in the industry or in the corporate side. Or you're trying to take this far and beyond. Or you have anxiety about the algorithm. This is a track that you have to be on. It is an investment in your growth as a YouTuber. It is an investment in your growth as an online entrepreneur. YouTube, my friends, there's no such thing as making YouTube a full-time job. If it's a full-time job, you're gonna end up firing yourself. But if it's a business that you're running as an entrepreneur, the sky's the limit on it if you do it right and if you invest in yourself and you educate yourself. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. So you mentioned the algorithm. There were two sessions today on uh, re reverse engineering decoding the algorithm. What is the algorithm and what were they talking about? So the YouTube algorithm is uh, lines and lines and lines of code and programming language, things that are very complicated for most people. I have a background in web development. Uh, I was a Flash developer at one point, so I understand these things a little better sometimes. The best way I can put it in English is it's the rules by which YouTube decides to rank and distribute content and also how YouTube understands the relationship between one video and another. A big focus here at VidCon was understanding the related uh, videos that show up on the right hand side but also how to trigger recommended videos on the YouTube homepage for viewers because the subscribe box it's practically meaningless right now we all are aware of that so we got some really great information from Matt Gillen um, from Lil Monster Media and uh, Daryl Eves who you guys know is a uh, YouTube expert uh, from his agency Creatus and we got a lot of data based on looking at hundreds if not over a thousand YouTube channels uh, they have access to a lot of channels Daryl and his company they own and manage over 17 channels of their own and they have like 58 channels as clients and they have access to even more data than that. Matt Gillen was able to partner with a company and we get access to a thousand channels that they made anonymous and be able to uh, pinpoint um, over 200 factors of YouTube's algorithm and 28 specific data points. And so they did an exhaustive series of case studies and we learned a lot from that and we learned what YouTube might be looking for and how we can position for that. And I was really fascinated because what they describe is very much in line with everything I've been saying about how the algorithm works. It validated that for me beyond a shadow of a doubt. I have access to a couple of channels myself, much less data than them, but for the scale of data they had, it was able to confirm what I've been seeing too in the channels that I manage for clients, the other things that I've been working on and building, plus my experience in doing uh, coding in the past and talking to programmers day in and day out. I talk to people I know in various industries every day. I have clients that are actual programmers and I ask them questions about what they think and suspect when it comes to things like the algorithm and artificial intelligence. Hearing it from two bona fide YouTube certified experts that have looked at so many channels and have access to so much data really made me feel that not only do I understand the algorithm well, it made me think about things that I can continue to learn and that I can look at harder. And I found new opportunities to grow and things that I want to share with my audience. So I'm really looking forward to learning as much as I can from every single creative here, whether they have 100 subscribers or whether they have 100,000 subscribers, we all have something to learn. So they have the, uh, uh, VidCon set up the uh, three tracks of uh, industry and creator and community. There are a lot of community people here. They're not necessarily learning how to make videos. What do you think of what they have going here? I think if you're on the community track, it's about celebrating uh, YouTube. Maybe you want to meet your favorite YouTuber. Maybe you want to like bond with people over the things that you want to watch on YouTube. Maybe one day you aspire to be a creator, but there's a lot for you to enjoy here. There's also people not just from YouTube here, but there are Snapchatters, there are people from Musical.ly. Uh, Awesomeness TV has been doing a lot of great, interesting things with movies and films, and a lot of their talent is represented here. Uh, Disney has a presence here. So there's a lot to benefit from the community track as well. And how about the creator track? Have you looked at that schedule? 
For the creator track, it's a great way for YouTubers who are growing and aspiring to bond with their favorite YouTubers and to meet people. I met a lot of my followers and fans and viewers. I was able to get some one-on-one -on -one time with them in the wild here, geek out with them. I was able to meet a lot of other interesting creators. I was able to find that there might be some opportunities to collab with people. So the creator track, that has a ton of value too. And I think it's something that's for either active or aspiring YouTubers. I think that every active or aspiring YouTuber should come and do VidCon's creator track at least once. What do you think of the pricing for the industry track? It's four times that of the creator track. Is it uh, unfair or fair for the uh, organizers to price it so prohibitively for so many people? It's fair, to be honest. I'm surprised they're not charging more for what you actually get in terms of the knowledge, the access, the value, and the networking relationships. I'm gonna make more than my money back. I've uh, secured some potential partnerships that are gonna exponentially grow my business. I've met, had some great conversations. I've learned a lot, but the networking opportunities, that is worth it alone. I pay more uh, when I'm not speaking at conferences. I pay more for that kind of access to people. And here, I know what the value is. And so, for me, I don't think it's unfair. I think it gives you something to understand and appreciate um, what it takes and what the next level looks like. I think it represents that gap. I think the lack of a gap between community and creator shows you how easy it is to go from watching YouTube to doing YouTube. But to go from doing YouTube to being part of the industry is another thing entirely.